I think the best part of the 10K is how many people in Richmond come out for it. it whether just between the runners, the walkers, the people that do the water stops, the people that are just cheering along the sides. I just think it's, it's like the one day in Richmond that almost everybody comes out and it's almost unheard of. I know around our office people talk to other people and say, well, are you running? No. Well, are you at least going to come watch? And most of the time people will say yes. Um, so I think that's really, it's just awesome to see how many people come out. And I don't think you can really understand it until you go. Um, I've brought people with me that I tell them so many people come out and they don't really get it until they're actually there and they see the number of people lined up on Monument Avenue just to cheer on random people that they don't know. So I think that's, it's probably one of the most exciting days in Richmond. I really love that. Um, last year, it was going to be my five year anniversary from when my last cancer treatment was. And so I was trying to think of something to do to celebrate it. And so my sister-in-law and I came up with the idea to try to raise $5,000 for Massey to celebrate five years. And that was the first year that I really trained pretty diligently and really put a lot of effort into fundraising. And so I started fundraising right after the holidays that year, probably shortly after the new year. And I met my goal and raised over $5,000. And it was really a fun experience. I had friends from Durham come with me to run it that year. And they had shirts made up um, for all of us as a team. And we ran it together. And I was surprised running the 10K, the number of people that stopped. And my shirt had said, my, had my name and it said, I'm five years cancer free. And my friends and I had a number of people that would catch up with us and, was, and would stop to run with us and tell us their story about you know, that they had been treated at Massey or their experience with cancer or they knew someone or they wanted to hear my story. And it was really, it was really awesome to run a race and have people just come up to you and stop and want to talk about it. It was a unique experience and it was really cool. So this year I did the same thing and my, um, my friends ran with me again and I took a little less of an um, intense approach to fundraising this year just because I hit people up pretty hard last year. So I usually get up and head out around like 8 or 8.30 um, and Monroe Park always has the kind of expo going on and so we'll go down and walk around and see what's going on there. And usually the Massey always has a booth so we'll stop by there and pick up little bibs that you can do ones that say like running in support of and fill it in, that kind of thing. So we'll usually pick one up and wear them while we're running. Um, so we'll spend some time down there and usually run into people that we know in Richmond. And usually our whatever way we're running in is starting around 9 o'clock and so we'll head over to the start line. The costumes are always pretty entertaining. There was a guy this year that I wasn't entirely sure what he was supposed to be. It looked like he was dressed up as a caveman and then he had like a large boulder attached to his back that he was dragging along with him, which is interesting. Um, there's a group that fundraises from Massey every year that I know they dress up as houses. So you usually can see them out running around. Um, there's always some man dressed up as a woman, depending on, you know, either he's a hula girl or a ballerina or something. Um, there was, there was Spider-Man one year, Fred Flintstone was running around one year. So it, it's always interesting to see what people do. I don't know if I could run in a costume, but <laughs> some people like doing it. We support Massey! Usually the funds that the Massey Alliance raises, um, we typically make the donation of the funds that we raise to um, Dr. Ginder's discretionary fund, the director's discretionary fund. And that allows him to look during the year at Massey and what's being done there and what they hope to do. And he can decide where the money would best be put to use. So whether that is actually in the um, in the research facilities, if there's something that they are needing there, if there's something that um, the treatment facilities need, it's really, he's the person with the best overview of what the Cancer Center is trying to do. And so we make a donation that allows him to decide where there is the greatest need. Well, I think the future of cancer research is very bright in terms of our greater understanding of, of cancer, as a, of the molecular details of cancer. And I think as we understand more about that, we'll be able to do better at early detection. We'll be able to do better at effective prevention. And when we have to treat cancer, we'll be able to treat it more specifically and effectively with fewer side effects. So I think we're looking at a time when it's very difficult to say we're going to cure all cancers. It may turn out that what we'll really be able to do is control the cancers and convert them from a deadly, fatal disease into a chronic disease that people can live with for years or even decades with minimal symptoms or side effects. So I believe that'll be the outcome of this research. It's an exciting time. I only wish there were more resources to take advantage of all the exciting research opportunities that we have. It's never been this great in my career, and I think it's only getting better.